Hello and welcome to Courageous Doctors, the new show for you and your doctor. On the show today, we'll go over Obamacare updates, other general health care news, and health and safety tips. Now let's begin. In the Wall Street Journal, the insurance companies are asking for a 20% increase in premiums for policies that are bought on the Obamacare exchange. That's terrible. The Obamacare, we'll talk about that now in a little more detail. As you know, uh, right now the debate's going on in the Republican Congress to try to repeal it, but it doesn't help that whatever is left on the exchange, they're raising the premiums. Fox News makes the very important suggestion that we should all buy long-term care insurance. Now, the reason why is because for those of us when we get older and we either have to go in an institution or hopefully can stay at home, um, to have uh, somebody come in and take care of us at home, Medicare and Medicaid really don't cover that much. In fact, um, Medicaid, you can only go on after you've depleted all your funds. So long-term care will allow you to keep your money and you should buy it earlier and pay for it every month because then the premiums don't go up. So I, I think it's a pretty good suggestion. The Star-Ledger adds to that that the United States Senate wants to cut Medicaid funds that are now used to pay for nursing homes. They want to cut that money. So, you know, look into long-term care. I have it, and I think it's a good thing. The um, CBO, you know, the Congressional Budget Office, has been looking at the Republican legislation, so-called Trump Care, and they said that 14 million people will lose their health insurance if the legislation passes next year. And this could go up to 23 million or more by 2026. So this is a real problem now that Senator McConnell, the, uh, the, Senate, pres the Senate majority leader, the Senate leader, the uh, leader in the Senate, uh, he has to deal with the Congressional Budget Office. And, you know, these are ongoing debates going on now and next week they'll try another vote but they can't lose too many more Republican senators or they won't pass it through because no no Democrats gonna vote for this bill the Democrats wanna keep Obamacare and just fix it so uh, if they're gonna make everyone uninsured it's gonna be tough to pass the bill so we'll see what happens next week uh, let's look at a little more details from the Washington Post on cuts that the Trump has done generally on his budget, and, and the, these are really not very good. Uh, Trump cut uh, one-fifth of the money going to the NIH, National Institute of Health. That would cover research for cancer, heart disease, allergy, and other things. So 20%, uh, one-fifth one of that money is gone. One-third of the money was cut out of the EPA. I don't know. You know, uh, we used to worry about being poisoned and having clean rivers and and not uh, asphyxiating ourselves. But I guess uh, the president doesn't care about that. So one third of the money used to protect us so we can breathe. I mean, even Ron, even uh, even Nixon and Ronald Reagan put that stuff in. You can't get more Republican than that. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on, but uh, let's hope we can still breathe after this president leaves office. Uh, One-fifth of the money uh, was taken away from CHIPS. <laughs> That's our insurance for children. Uh, for the working poor, it's not even Medicaid, it's the working poor. Uh, you know, you have trouble making money and, you know, you can't afford regular insurance, but you make too much for Medicaid. You get some help, it's called CHIPS, uh, like a family insurance uh, for children. One-fifth of that money is gone. Funds are decreased to the CDC in general, um, and, this, and the money used for emergencies, like all that money's gone, although Trump did promise to make a special fund for emergency preparedness, but you never have enough money for that. Look how they couldn't come up with the proper money to fight Zika virus. We're still trying to get a vaccine and, and all the other money they were gonna put out for it. Although I believe now, one of the last things I heard today uh, and uh, was that one of the senators, the Republican senator, said, oh, yeah, I think it was Rubio from Florida, said, listen, you got to put money in for Zika. I'm not voting for your Trump health care. So some of that money may come back. But it's a fight to get money out of this president, I tell you. And decreased money to the FDA. Well, you, you know about that with the 
uh, the, the new person that took over the FDA for President Trump uh, said that there was too much money that was uh, uh, being wasted and regulations were held up and we couldn't get drugs put through fast enough. And so they were saying that maybe if we take money away from the administration for the FDA, that maybe we can find ways to do deals and force drugs to go through. Well, there are other things the FDA does, too, like, hello, food stamps, feeding kids in schools. Uh, kids go to school hungry. You know, they need money. They need food. And all that came out of the FDA. That was all cut, too. So let's hope in Jersey that we can, that uh, uh, our wonderful governor will, um, uh, aside from all the other things he's cut, that maybe he won't cut uh, will allow us to have our lunch programs and food stamps. Uh, I was just talking to, to a friend the other day whose whole job works in that area to try to work with different towns and get money in the schools and how to use it properly to feed kids. And these food stamp programs are a lifesaver. I mean, these kids can actually eat. So uh, let's see what happens. But Trump's cutting the money. All right, the Star-Ledger... Um, as we said, New Jersey is going to lose one-fifth of its money for Medicaid. That will affect about 1.6 million people. Not good. Washington Post, uh, yeah, Trump wants to cut money used for paid family leave. Now, this I didn't understand because I thought that the president's daughter was all behind doing family leave. So I didn't understand this Washington uh, Post um, article that money was being cut for family leave. I know in New Jersey this probably won't affect us as much only because our money doesn't come from the federal. It comes out of a temporary disability insurance that we pay into um, a yearly deductible from our payrolls, $33.50 every year, and then we get our family leave pay out of that. But this is interesting, though, in family leave. I don't know if you follow this, but in the New Jersey Assembly, one of, the, one of the senators, actually, um, is proposing to increase from six weeks to 12 weeks family leave. Uh, right now it's six weeks. And, and you know, they pay two-thirds of the salary, but it's capped at, like, just over 600 She wants to cap it at over 900 so that they can actually afford. Because the reason why only 10 or 12 percent of people who can go for family leave actually go is they can't afford to, to even be paid two-thirds of their salary. So if we raise the cap, extend it to 12 weeks, and, and this is interesting, they want it, uh, the senator wants it to not only be just for taking care of your kids, but if you have a sick parent or if a spouse is sick. So I, I, thought, I think it's a good deal. I really hope it passes. I hope the governor signs it. Uh, okay, let's see. Um... Now, the, um, an interesting article in JAMA. This is very interesting. You know, one of the things the governor and, um, and the secretary of health, who's also a physician, uh, not the governor, that President, um, President Trump wants to do with Medicaid is put it back into block grants. That's what's all being voted on now in, in Congress. Uh, we used to have that. Remember, the states got so much money and you had to try to pay all your hospital and doctor bills and treatments on that money. And with Obamacare, we got a lot more money. So those of us that have a lot of uh, Medicaid patients, uh, myself included, uh, you know, we began to actually get paid. And, and it was a little easier to find doctors to see my patients. I'm a pediatrician. And sometimes it's hard to refer patients out. And it's still hard to get some things done, but it's been easier. But when we go back to these block grants, I couldn't get people, I couldn't get anybody to see my patients. It was horrible. And, and the interesting article that came out in JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, this was a Canadian doctor, uh, or an economist actually, and he looked at Canada's experience, which has been doing block grants even while we had moved to Obamacare. And he said originally they had the, you know, medical inflation goes up about 12% whereas our inflation goes up like 3 or 4% a year. So uh, initially, Canada had kept up with the medical inflation, and they had given that extra money every year to the states. Now they're back at 3 or 4% inflation, which means the medical costs go up, but there's less money to pay in Canada for people in these different provinces to pay out for all the uh, health care issues. So we're obviously going to have the same problem, 
and it's going to be horrible, and uh, I'm just not looking forward to it. And for those of you that are, are on Medicaid, you shouldn't be looking forward to it either. So this is what's holding up most of the congressional vote. This is why the vote failed a couple months ago. This is why it may or may not fail next week. Uh, the Republicans wanted to repeal Obamacare, but the Medicaid issue is huge. Uh, it's not just putting people out of insurance. It's not giving monies to your moms and grandmas that are going into institutions, not having money for all the excessive care, putting a burden on states by not giving them enough money or keeping up with medical inflation. I mean, it's the whole picture. And uh, yeah, maybe premiums will come down for the rest of us in the country. As I said when I started this paper, uh, the Obamacare premiums are going up 20%, so maybe those premiums will come down a little, but uh, is, it, it's, it's, not, it's not very balanced. Um, let's see. The Wall Street Journal, moving on, said that, um, this is interesting, uh, some states have passed laws requiring drug companies to actually justify increases in the price of drugs, and they've even formed uh, purchasing groups uh, across state groups uh, where they can buy cheaper drugs. I thought that was very interesting. I had not heard of that before. CNN uh, mentioned that Dr. Jerome Adams is now the new Surgeon General. Uh, he was the former Indiana State Health Commissioner under then Governor Pence, now Vice President Pence. So Vice President Pence has brought a lot of his people in. Remember the uh, director of, of, of the Center for Medicaid and, and Medicare, uh, that came from his state uh, uh, Vice President Pence has brought a number of people into Trump's administration. The AMA, uh, this is interesting, reports that less than half of the docs now own their own practice. Uh, so I guess I'm in now in the minority. I do own my own practice, but I guess I'm one of the few hanging out. So um, let's hope we can hang on. And the Star-Ledger says that there is a bill pending in the New Jersey State Senate to ban the sale of supplemental uh, baby mattresses. These are mattresses that, it, it's not what comes with the crib. You know the extra mattresses you put in the playpen or a crib? The American Academy of Pediatrics says that you shouldn't have extra things put in the crib up to a year, but I think it doesn't really talk beyond a year. And these supplemental mattresses are probably more for the older kids like, like toddlers or maybe older babies too. Uh, the person that's authoring the bill uh, was somebody who, you know, unfortunately her child died, suffocated in between these two mattresses, and she's trying to stop the company from selling them. And this has uh, had a tough time getting through uh, New Jersey um, uh, Congress, but the, uh, the Assembly and the Senate, it passed the Assembly, and the Senate is still holding up on it. The mattresses are called Dream On Me mattresses, and um, we'll see what happens. The, I think the Senate was also waiting to see what the regulatory agency, the safety agency in New Jersey, uh, if it actually has a problem with this mattress. But th this is a company that gives jobs in New Jersey, currently 200 jobs. They're going to go up to 800 jobs if we don't throw them out of business. So I think they want to be careful. They're probably going to look for a compromise, like maybe use the mattresses in an older child that can't suffocate. But we'll see what happens. Very good. Let's uh, move on to other health care news now. The, uh, the Star-Ledger reports that measles uh, was found, I believe it was uh, in the last month or two, in a Bergen County uh, person who came uh, out of state and was not vaccinated. And he was exposed, but I believe the follow-up the last month or two is, uh, is we haven't really had a tremendous outbreak of measles, but there's been a few scares. So we're still having that problem with people coming in out of the country, out of state, unvaccinated. Uh, CNN says that there was a botulism outbreak, uh, and this is kind of scary. Botulism, you know, is a type of food poisoning, Clostridium botulinum. It paralyzes you. You probably have heard of the botulism they in women inject or other people inject to get rid of their wrinkles. It's used for other surgical techniques, but botulism uh, paralyzes the nerves. That's how it gets rid of the wrinkles. Uh, and... Uh, when it paralyzes the nerves inside of you, you, you die and stop breathing. Uh, these were from the nacho cheese snacks in California. I think the person had stopped at a gas station, you know, that sells, you know, an assortment of things and was poisoned by these nacho cheese snacks. 
Anyway, um, the uh, warning uh, was, was appropriate to uh, also be careful that you can be poisoned from, you have to be careful with canned foods, right? When you're canning your own food, uh, botulism comes from the soil. It can get mixed up in there and if things aren't preserved. And that's the main reason why we don't give honey to children under one year of age, right? Don't give honey to a baby under one because they can die from botulism poisoning. Fox News, uh, there's a recall of Nathan's hot dogs and Curtis hot dogs. Uh, because they found metal inside. Uh, CNN, there's a recall of nuts containing listeria. That's another food poisoning, can make you very sick. And this was Crojan's Simple Truth Roasted Macadamia and Avis Organic Cashews Roasted and Salted. Uh, Fox News says there's a recall of Libby's Chef Boyardee Spaghetti Meatballs. Uh, only because it didn't have, it didn't label the amount of milk that was inside for people allergic to milk. So that wasn't a disease, that was from milk. Uh, there's a recall of hummus that has listeria, and that was from pine nuts, artisan hummus, lintana white bear hummus with pine nuts and herbs, and marketside classic hummus with pine nuts. CNN said there's a recall of frozen yellow fen tuna infected with hepatitis A. That's not fun. And that's the Hilo Fish Company, and these were 8-ounce tuna steaks and tuna cubes. And CNN says there's a recall of creation garden beef, and that's from E. coli. A lot of food poisoning. This is interesting. Fox says that a tick found in a child paralyzed the child until the tick was removed. You know, usually we think a tick, you get Lyme disease and you get antibiotics for it, but there's some nasty stuff. This tick, the child was unable to walk until they took the tick out. So I guess if your child suddenly can't walk, look for a tick. There's another type of tick. Remember up in Maine that Poison, it's a virus. Lyme's not a virus, but this is a virus that the tick carries. Unlike Lyme, that takes two days to infect you from the tick. So if the tick's in you less than two days, it doesn't get transmitted to you. Um, and it takes like a week or so before you get sick from it. This, it goes into you immediately and makes you sick immediately and very sick and you can die from it. So this is a scary tick disease. And another thing the tick did, and this is pretty scary. This is all new stuff to me. I never heard this. The tick made this man allergic to beef and, um, and dairy. And he almost died from eating beef and dairy because he had a tick bite. I mean, how crazy is that? Um, let's see. Fox News says that, oh boy, Legionnaire's disease is back again. You know, that just never seems to go away. That was in the Upper East Side in Manhattan. You know, Legionnaires is where it goes through the venting system, poorly ventilated air conditioner systems in big buildings. You can get it on boats and things. Lately, it's been in New York and in different apartment complexes. And they check the water coolers and try to figure it out. And it, 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 you can stop breathing. It gives you a bad pneumonia. It's a very scary disease. It's treatable, but you got to pick it up early. Um, this is scary too. Fox says that there's something called a rat lungworm. These are parasites that um, the rats carry and uh, apparently uh, they get into uh, snails and shrimp and things and if you, if you eat raw shrimp or snails uh, this can go to your brain and kill you. Um, it was out in Hawaii mainly uh, the scary part for the last year but recently it's popped up in Florida so uh, just be careful with that. Uh, let's see. CNN says there's an experimental Ebola virus vaccine that's now being tried. And, of course, the Doctors Without Borders, doctors are getting it first. Uh, polio is back in the Congo. You know, polio was supposed to be wiped out. The only place it pops up is, like, Afghanistan or, uh, or Pakistan or Africa, in this case, the polio. <clears throat> so the Rotary Club... Uh, I'm very proud of, has worked hard to get rid the world of polio, and they've put up a lot of the money to do it. Bill Gates has helped. <clears throat> but um, I guess it still pops up in places where you have wars and people don't get vaccinated. 
Uh, this is no good. The Associated Press says their flu vaccine this year wasn't very effective. <laughs> I could have told you that. I had the flu three times and I had the shot. <sighs> Figure that one out. But let's hope they do a better job next year. There's even talk now about some kind of patch flu vaccine they're working on. So we'll see where that comes out. We, we really need much better flu shots. Uh, cholera is back in Yemen and 800 people have died. Cholera is one of those, you know, uh, foodborne diseases, uh, drinking dirty water. And uh, we, we don't usually get cholera vaccines anymore. I've gotten it when I go to countries with cholera. If you go to countries that, uh, that have epidemics, but generally we don't see it in America anymore. Uh, modern healthcare uh, says that there's still a recall on sodium bicarb. This is one of the IV drugs we use in the hospital. And uh, it's important to help correct certain conditions like severely acidotic people. So we had a recall on some of the IV drugs and this is one of them. Um, and uh, CNN says there's a shortage of bee sting venom. Uh, you know, you go to your allergist uh, to get your allergy shots. So I guess this year, your allergist may tell you they're having trouble giving you shots for bee stings. So you just may have, but you know, you'll still carry your EpiPen and have your Benadryl. Try to be careful, but you'll have to talk to your allergist about that. Hi, I'm Ingrid Burke. And I'm Gina Unger. Gina has known Dr. Barry in a professional and personal capacity for many years, and we are thrilled to be in his building. We are psychotherapists, and we offer mental health counseling for ages 12 and up. We do individual, couples, and family counseling. We're also excited to say that we have groups that we have for teenage boys and girls for social skills, anger management, and self-esteem building. If you need to reach us, check us out at lifeworksnj.com. Our phone numbers are also listed on that website if you'd like to contact us. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's move on to health and safety tips. Uh, CBC News said that they, um, this is very scary, it, and we, we got to do something about this. A teen suffered a fatal arrhythmia, like a heart attack, two hours after chugging an energy drink uh, in some kind of latte. He felt dizziness in his chest, and he dropped dead. You know, um, I've been watching... Uh, on C-SPAN over the last couple of years, some of the Senate hearings and oversight committees on these energy drinks, we got to do a better job. I know this was a teenager, it wasn't a little kid, but you know, you just don't chug these energy drinks. They have a hell of a lot of caffeine in them and it caused an arrhythmia. In fact, listen to this. The Mayo Clinic uh, is, is advising safe levels of caffeine. So they said you should have less than 400 milligrams a day. So what is that? What is 400 milligrams a day? That's four cups of coffee. So you can safely take up to four cups of coffee a day. So what in the world does teenager drink, chugging it down that he had a heart attack and died? What is in these energy drinks? L listen to this. You can even have 10 cans of cola and still live and be healthy. No more than two energy shots. So what did this teen drink? Uh, Vente Starbucks has 475 milligrams. It's already over the limit. A five-hour energy shot that's only two hours has 200 milligrams. That's why you can take two of them, two of those little five-hour energy things. 16-ounce energy drinks, they only have 160 milligrams, like a monster rock star of venom. So you get the idea. The energy drinks, if you drink them slowly, even those little five-hour ones aren't bad. The Starbucks has to be careful. Um, but you can drink soda all day. It's not going to bother you. Four cups of coffee, up to 400 milligrams a day. So what did he chug? Maybe he's just drinking it all at once? I don't know. Uh, scary stuff. Um, let's see. CNN had an interesting thing. They said, be careful... This is for all you dieters that think that, uh, you know, protein shakes are good. 
But uh, be careful because some of them have been recalled. Uh, they had hormones, steroids, arsenic, cadmium, lead, mercury. Man, what's that stuff doing in my protein shake? That is scary. I don't want to drink that stuff. Increased creatinine levels. Uh, loss of calcium. They compete with your calcium. Overloading the kidney with protein. Whoa. Be careful, people, please. New York Times um, says uh, there's a, a congressman in the New York Times that is trying to get chemicals listed in women's tampons. You know, I remember back in the 70s and 80s, the scare of, of dying, people dying of bad staph infections through infected tampons. This is scary stuff. And now uh, there's other things in there, pesticides, fragrances, uh, and you can still get staph infection. So none of this stuff's being tested after, I mean, they, people, women just stopped in the late 70s or so using tampons. Then it came back again. The trend apparently was safe. But no one's ever labeled these things. Nothing's ever labeled. So the congresswoman from New York is saying, let's label and see what's actually in there. It's a, a good idea. CNN talking about sunscreens. Very appropriate. It's summertime. Uh, a banana boat sunscreen aerosol aerosol that you spray on allowed a toddler to get second-degree burns. Got to be careful with the kids. Make sure the stuff's put on right. It, it makes sure it actually goes on, that you put it on enough. If you go in the water, put it on again when you come out. Uh, oh, boy. They said that the, the SPF factor, the sun protection factor, should be at least 30. And two things to avoid are oxybenzones or retinyl palmitates if you're sensitive to them. But uh, you, some of them uh, do have, and you can use the zinc oxides and titanium oxides. So you're better off with zinc oxide or titanium oxide. If you're sensitive, you should stay away from the PABAs, paraminobenzoic acid, oxybenzones, or retinyl palmitates. Let's see. Uh, Fox News says uh, they were looking at a Bloomberg News report. And, and get a load of this. Sanderson Farms organic chickens. You know, everybody's into the organic craze now. One-third of the inspections, one-third of the inspections on these organic chickens had ketamine anesthetic drugs. Ketamine. That's when you go in to have an operation and they paralyze you with ketamine. What is that doing in my chicken? Chloramphenicol, butorphanol, antibiotics, ciprofloxacin. I don't want to eat that stuff, people. CNN, uh, cosmetics and hairspray. Hairspray is the big thing now, and all hair products. Cosmetic products were scary, just like the tampons, the cosmetic cosmetics, but it's mainly the hair ones they're, they're getting into. Hair breakage, hair loss, itching, rash. What is in that stuff? Oh, Lord. Washington Post said that we're back to Legionnaire's disease, but get a load of this one. Infants born in water baths, there was Legionnaire's disease in the water that the baby was born in. Figure it out. I don't know. Fox says that, speaking about uh, baths, swim pools, a lot of them are contaminated with a parasite called cryptosporidium. Remember, we talked a lot about food poisonings. Cryptosporidium is one of our, our, our poisonings that causes diarrhea. Apparently, animals poop in people's pools and things. Uh, you can find cryptosporidium in well water, raw milk, farm-made apple cider that's not sterilized, uncooked meat, and Lord help us, salads and raw vegetables. So, you know, you can see why we're all... One, uh, CDC says that one out of six of us is being poisoned every day from foods. <laughs> No wonder. All right, now this is really, really scary. For all you people getting tattoos, I did not know this. Apparently tattoo people do know it. They've all told me, but I didn't know this. This man died of a Vibrio cholera-like infection, killed him, got a tattoo, went swimming in Vibrio-infected waters. Vibrio causes cholera. Vibrio-infected waters in the Gulf of Mexico within hours of getting his tattoo and died. Apparently, you're not supposed to get a tattoo wet. 
especially not wet if it's infected with Vibrio. Let's see. Um, CNN says that the Environmental Defense Fund, which is one of those oversight funds, found lead in 20% people, get this, 20% of the samples tested on baby juices, baby food, teething biscuits. This is a big fund, Environmental Defense Fund. This is not some little thing. What is lead doing in our baby food? I mean, didn't we all see the Michigan thing up in Flint where they contaminated the, the pipes? Newark, where I am, the Newark, New Jersey area, lead in the schools, lead in baby food. If baby food's not safe, what is left? Oh, this is scary. CNN says um, people are catching salmonella uh, from their pet ducks, chickens, and geese. And the warning is wash your hands after touching them and please don't kiss the duck. Uh, CNN said, I don't know why people would do this, but people are eating mushrooms in their backyard and dying or getting liver disease or Lord knows what else. Why would you eat a mushroom in your backyard? Don't even ask. It's called a death cap mushroom. I'm not even going there. CDC. Um, oh, Lord, this just gets worse and worse. A baby, a newborn baby caught consecutive group B strep infections, which can kill you, cause a meningitis. It's one of the things we look for when a baby's born. The baby repeatedly went back to the hospital with consecutive infections gotten from the mother. The mother is where it normally is passed through at birth but got it after birth consecutively because she was eating her own placenta, sold in pills, Lord knows what reason, and her placenta was infected with the group B strep. She kept eating it and kept infecting her baby through her breast milk, and twice her baby almost died of meningitis. Not even going there. Uh, we're almost at the end. Uh, CNN says it, uh, these are some healthy, happy notes now. CNN says uh, potatoes are healthy for us. It has no cholesterol, plenty of B6, C, and iron, plenty of fiber in the skin and protein. Just leave out the sour cream, leave out the butter, leave out the cheese, leave out the mayonnaise, and don't fry it. No fried potatoes. Um, that sounds like the fun part for most people. But And lastly, Time Magazine said, how do we get our children to eat their veggies? And this is interesting. Remember, I mentioned I talked to a friend recently who they actually use this in New Jersey in the schools to get kids to eat. They give very uh, fun names. For example, tangy ginger bok choy, sweet sizzling green beans, rich buttery roasted sweet corn, dynamite chili, tangy lime seasoned butts, uh, beets, tangy lime seasoned beets, and twisted citrus glazed carrots. With that, uh, we thank you for listening in. We hope to see you again next month. As always, if you have comments, please feel free to call in the station and enjoy the rest of the day, and we look forward to seeing you.